Hey, welcome to this Windows and Computers channel and uh, we are now going to have a small review of the latest build of Windows 10 Redstone 5. This is the build 17682. It was released today, uh, May 31st, uh, around 1 p.m. Eastern Time, which is often a typical time for releasing a build. And of course, I installed it on my PC flawless install. I would say a little faster than usual. Um, that pre-install time, usually taking up to three hours on my PC, took about two now. And then there was the install that took about the typical um, 40, maybe 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, it is really interesting because they seem to have kind of slightly lowered the time of install. I don't know if it's just me, but um, looks pretty good. No flaws, no problems. Of course, it was pretty much most of the time unattend unattended uh, install. It was, you know, it's a warm day today here in Montreal. We're at about 30 Celsius uh, and it's hot in the home because I'm waiting for my air conditioning that I have ordered. So um, I, uh, you know, just let it go through and, and went outside to do other things. So, but, you know, it didn't seem to have any problems. And it actually, when I came back about, an, I'd say about an hour, 45 minutes later, it was almost done. I clicked restart and it installed flawlessly there. Um, anything new in this build? A few little things, uh, nothing much. You know, it's interesting because they kind of slowed down a little bit the, um, the pace of new features. And um, I'm wondering if it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that there was a lot of changes in the Windows team. And maybe they're just focusing more on trying to make it better rather than trying to make it with tens, tons of other new things in it. That, let's be frank, in every version, most of what's new will never be used by the majority of people. So maybe they're just focusing a little more on trying to make things right. So sets has a few improvements. Um, well the main improvement that is something that i actually upvoted from someone that said you know what in sets i don't know when or what can be used and um you know what app i can actually use with sets and all of that so at some point it's like okay but how do i you know join in i want to have a my mail app maybe with a a uh, email and you know well when you actually and have sets on your PC and you actually open another tab. So one of the things that it would open, of course, Microsoft Edge, and you were opening most of the time something that was on the bottom, which was the news feed. Well, now there's news feed, but there's apps. So you can change that. And so basically there's frequent destinations, but it tells you. So I wanna have, for example, my mail, I can click here and I've mail open and you see now I've got the file explorer here and I've got the mail tab here. So this is more productive for me to have all of that as I need to use them. So this is pretty cool and it uh, makes a little more sense to use sets if you wish. Of course, um, you know, a lot of people are asking me all the time. Uh, I don't see why sets is better than having all the icons or the different tabs at the bottom in the taskbar. While it's very simple, there is an importance to it because sets is different. In the bottom, you see everything that's open. In sets, you can actually have the different tabs of something or everything that is related to each other. So that means you are uh, on your email, there's a email about something, you need to check it out. Well, you might need to have your file explorer open in a specific folder for different Word documents related to that email. Then have a Word document open related to what you are working and what the email wants you to do and a web page of maybe some article or some information. So the set stamps are related to each other. It is a way to work where at the bottom, it's everything that you open in apps that are there regardless of are there is there a link between one or the other so it's very very different and it's actually a way to organize your work it's it's something that you know it's like to reorganize your workflow if you want so um you know sets is an interesting um an interesting experience 
Apart from that, uh, if you actually project wirelessly your display, like with a mirror cast and stuff like that, um, one of the things that um, a lot of people were complaining is the difficulty and understanding where to maybe stop the casting or where to, you know, change the settings, um, depending on what you are actually um, casting to another device, for example, maybe another PC. So they've added uh, and changed a few ways. There's now a bar that will actually show up that give you what type of casting you're doing. Is it a gameplay? Is it, um, you know, uh, a PowerPoint? Because it will also change the way your computer is actually casting to reduce the lag, for especially for a game. Um, and it's easier to understand how to disconnect. Uh, Microsoft Edge gets some improvements for devs. So developers that are um, doing all sorts of things in there have new things, new ways of getting in with um, web authentication preview. So now you can actually authenticate with Edge into different websites. There are things that are actually using different types of security keys. So uh, you can use biometrics, uh, Windows Hello, for example, your, your, your fingerprint, stuff like that. Uh, all sorts of little things like that that are um, being used basically in the, um, the, you know, so that developers can actually have you, um, if you want, authenticate in a website using something other than, you know, a password, for example. Uh, reminds me of Google Chrome this week that is actually adding tools with that. Um, other things for people that, you know, that this doesn't touch the average user. Uh, RSAT now available on demand. Um, what's RSAT? Very simple. It's the remote server administrating tools. They had to be kind of brought in in Windows. Now they're kind of available and, and you just type RSAT and it, the tools will appear and things that you have will appear. Not everybody will have it, but uh, some of you will. I did get it. There's something uh, about the post upgrade setup. So some of you will see this screen pop up. So what's this screen? It's a new uh, way from uh, of Windows of kind of trying to set up the different um, hardware devices uh, from your uh, own computer. Now, it's not a new screen. It's something that was simply different before. And uh, so some of you have this when you actually start, uh, but not everybody will have it. I did see it on my machine, but a lot of you probably won't have it. It's, you know, part of that A-B testing that Microsoft does that I still don't understand why they do it. And that's pretty much it. Apart from that, of course, fixed a lot of issues. They fixed tons of little things that didn't work well. Uh, still some known issues, of course. Dark Team and File Explorer, they do say, don't worry, don't panic. That Dark Team looks weird and they know that it looks weird. It won't, uh, they, they won't, you know, uh, leave it like that. They have different things that they're gonna change. Just don't panic. They, they are getting a lot of information with that. Uh, mixed Reality Portal will reinstall the Mixed Reality software environment if you have uh, VR stuff. Uh, some insiders may find increased reliability and performance issues when launching Start on this build. So I do have a weird thing. I um, have noticed that the computer with Edge open sometimes kind of freezes for, I'd say, 20 seconds and suddenly things seem to come back to normal as if nothing happened. So there's something weird in this build that I am having here. Some insiders are experiencing a green screen with critical process died error. Uh, investigation, they're looking at why it's happening. And if you have a Surface Studio, it will fail to update in this build. Your PC hardware not supported in this version error. So, uh, you know, for the very few people and I'm not even sure that there's one that watches this uh, video has that. But um, that's pretty much it. So apart from, uh, like I said, I've um, been using it for a couple of hours now. I do get that weird little freeze up when I'm in certain websites in Edge, where even my clicking my start menu or 
or clicking on you know the um, the uh, notifications or the, the the quick action button is like it seems to be frozen that I do have that pops up but apart from that it seems to be an okay build for me so uh, what about you how did it go for this build um, did it go well for you I've seen a few of you that already told me that uh, updated fine and was okay um, and of course we'll be uh, looking at other builds as they are released if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up and thank you so much for following us on this channel